Welcome to the Alabama A&M Football Review. Highlights, features, and analysis with head coach Connell Maynard. Brought to you by Protective Life, Union Chapel Missionary Baptist Church, and University Kia. Good evening and welcome to the Alabama A&M Football Review with head coach Connell Maynard. I'm your host, Ted Dixon. Coach, the 82nd Magic City Classic didn't turn out the way we wanted it to, and I guess we could say as an institution, if it wasn't for the marching maroon and white and for the cheerleaders, we might look like we didn't show up. Well, you can say that. We we didn't play very well. We played uh, – we, we were still in the game at halftime. It was still a great game at halftime, but um, we just didn't execute very well, got off to a bad start. And uh, we couldn't afford to do that against a team like Alabama State, who has a great defense, one of the top three defenses in the league, uh, probably probably the top defense in the league. And uh, so we knew it was going to be a tough scoring. And, uh, you know, we couldn't afford to give those guys points or give them short fields and easy scores. And, and that's what we was doing. You saw a lot of anger on your team after the game, Coach. I know what I noticed that on the sideline was they were going into the tunnel. That's a lot of motivation for this week in your next to last home game when Florida A&M comes to town. Yeah, you know, you're you always going to be upset, especially in, in the Classic. You know, uh, it means a little bit more. It's the next game. They're the same. They count as one win. Mm -hmm. But when you talk about the Magic City Classic, you really want to play well and you want to get the win for the fans and uh, the university, uh, the president, and AD, and everybody that's involved. That's and right. uh, we weren't able to do that. Uh, yesterday, so we yeah, we disappointed, and uh, you know we we had opportunity and we didn't take advantage of it. We laid an egg as well on the broadcast, having difficulty getting a signal out of Legion Field. You know we thought we fixed that years ago because your cell phone stopped working. Usually you knew it was classic time because your cell phone didn't work on Friday night, and that carried on through the day. Were there any other kind of interruptions, coach, or things that just had us out of sync a little bit that you noticed? Well, we got we left at the normal time. We always leave uh, to get there, and um, we we didn't have the same amount of uh, police car police security mm -hmm. to get us there on time. So we arrived about ten minutes later than we normally do, and then we had to sit out in the in the middle of the road for twenty five minutes uh, before we got into our locker room um, because of when Alabama State buses sitting in the middle of the thing and nobody could get by. So it, that put us behind about 45 minutes of when mm -hmm. we normally get there. We normally get there two hours and a half before the game, and right. now we wind up getting there uh, an hour and 45 minutes before the game. So it kind of threw our schedule off of what we we normally do before the game, uh, not to make any excuses, but that happened. And of course, there's a rhythm to all this kind of things, folks. Is that the <clears throat> timing before a ball game Things have to happen at a precise time. But I was still wondering after halftime, Coach, and after we look at the highlights, we'll be able to talk more about this. The halftime got a little extended, as it always does in the Classic. But this time, it looked like it got a little bit more extended. Did they tell you anything about that when you came out to the half? Because y'all were on the sideline forming up. Yeah, no, they didn't say anything. And uh, I, I kind of figured it, the halftime would be extended because when we got in the locker room, it takes us three, four, five minutes to get in the locker room. And I look at the clock in the locker room, it was just starting at 20 minutes. So, I mean, they already held the clock for four or five minutes right. already. They, they so, I figured that's why they did that, because they was going to extend it five minutes. So, you know, again, you want to go back out about four or five minutes with, on the clock so you can stretch in the end zones, get loose, and then you play. Well, of course, we go back out four or five minutes before, stretch in the end zone, get ready to play. The band's still on the field for another six or seven minutes. So, uh, you know, but it, it, in that situation, no team had an advantage because right. they was in the same boat as us. Right. But it was just stuff just kept happening, you know. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you got to be prepared. You got to be ready to adjust. And uh, that's life. That, you know, you get there, there's, there's a big old wreck. You got to sit in the light, you know. So that's life. That's part of it. And that's what we teach these guys all the time, give them life lessons. And that's another life lesson you can learn from that. Everything you always go the way you expect it. What are you going to do? Of course, Coach, starting out of the ball game and having the special special teams miscues that happened. Both teams were having it. It looked like if you had more, whoever had the most punt return yardage was going to win the ball game. Yeah, they, they returned the punt on us. We didn't get down the field. Uh, 
and then, then get our lanes and he ran it back. I don't know if we even touched him. And then on another punt, you know, we, we lost contain and he got down the sideline for about 30, 35 yard return. When all we got to do is just keep contained and force him back to where everybody is. The outside guy lost contain. So uh, this game, you know, it takes all 11 and everybody has to do their job. If you're not in your lane, not in your gap, you'll get gashed. And uh, uh, we, we, those, those things are correctable, but those things also can cost you games. You're trying to develop young student athletes. Special teams is usually a place where you can do that, correct? Yeah, yeah. You get try to get those young guys out there and, and get them out there, and so the so your starters can just focus on offense and defense and, and stay fresh. Uh, but you know, at the end of the day, we're gonna probably have to start getting our best players out there, and uh, they got to play more. They got to play more snaps. You know, if the defense played 65 snaps yesterday, you add another. 20 with special teams, that's 85. Uh, Travis Hunter played 90, 90, 120 snaps a game. We can't play 75, 80. And we're talking about the Bulldogs getting ready, closing out the Magic City Classic, but getting ready for the next home game. That's with Florida A&M, who are going to win, who will win the Eastern Division of the Southwestern Athletic Conference. But we get a chance to gas them on their way out the door. And we'll talk about that next on the Alabama A&M Football Review with Ann Coates. Connell Maynard. Engineering and science usually look like this, but our students build race cars from the ground up, explore wind tunnels, particle accelerators, and crystal growth. Our studies in cybersecurity and rocket propulsion have tech companies like Google and SpaceX recruiting at Alabama A&M University with one of the highest percentages of women STEM graduates in the country. Alabama A&M University, start here, Go anywhere. Don't get hit hard by low trade offers. Get up to $5,000 over Kelly Blue Book fair market value for any trade at University Kia. Check out our large selection of new Kias. University Kia proudly supports Alabama A&M University football. Go Bulldogs. Union Chapel Missionary Baptist Church. A church with a big heart of love. Located at 315 Winchester Road in Huntsville, Alabama. Under the leadership of Dr. O. Wendell Davis. The worship services begin at 7.45 a.m. and 10.45 a.m. every Sunday. Now, we pray that you are blessed by our worship experience. In golf, if you make a mistake, there is a mulligan. Well, in God, if you make a mistake, there is mercy. Aren't you glad God has mercy for your mistakes? Hello, I am P.T., Pastor Troy. I want to invite you to come and worship with us at the Fellowship of Faith, where Jesus is exalted and the Word is explained. We love Alabama a &M. Go Bulldogs! Companies hunger for our food scientists. Here, a new generation manages our cities of tomorrow. The discovery of hardier plants, healthier animals, is growing at our research station. Alabama A&M University, where new designs and ideas are put to the test. Be a researcher in our labs, or a forestry fire dog in our fields. Alabama A&M University. Start here, go anywhere. Engineering and science usually look like this, but our students build race cars from the ground up explore wind tunnels, particle accelerators, and crystal growth. Our studies in cybersecurity and rocket propulsion have tech companies like Google and SpaceX recruiting at Alabama A&M University with one of the highest percentages of women STEM graduates in the country. Alabama A&M University. Start here, go anywhere. Don't get hit hard by low trade offers. Get up to $5,000 over Kelly Blue Book fair market value for any trade at University Kia. Check out our large selection of new Kias. University Kia proudly supports Alabama A&M University football. Go Bulldogs!
Thank you for watching the Alabama A&M Football Review with head coach Kyle Maynard. I'm your host, Ted Dixie. Lots of events happening that we have to keep up with for the November 4th game, Florida A&M coming to town. It is our Hall of Fame game. You will get to see our new Hall of Fame inductees. It is Military Appreciation Day. We thank you all veterans for so much that you do for us. I don't know if it's the maroon out, white out, camouflage out, but we still want you to wear your maroon and white so when your coach team comes on the field, they're welcome to a very, very raucous but supportive Bulldog faith. Yeah, yeah, we need a, we need a big crowd. Uh, Zelda game, got fam, you coming in. Um, the best team in the conference. So we look forward to this challenge. It's going to be a great challenge, but we look forward to it. And uh, we get, we get to practicing this week and get prepared to put on a good show. Let's give them a little bit of a weather report. It's supposed to get cold this week. I was hoping, Coach, we could start a game at 32 degrees on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that, you know. But we're going to play. You know, I always tell the guys, you know, don't, don't worry about the elements. Don't worry about if it's 100 degrees or if it's 32 degrees or if it's raining. The team that goes out and want to play football and have fun, this team's going to win the game. The team that's worried about is, oh, it's hot or it's cold, or it's raining, you're going to get your head beat in. So we just got to be focused on playing football. Go out and have fun like you did when you were a little kid when you just go out and play in the rain or the cold or the hot or the heat. So that's what we got to focus on. So one of the other events that we will have or one of the other promotion is high school senior day as well, Coach. You already have a lot of seniors that come on campus at every home game for visits. Is this going to be a big one for you? Is this the, or is this the largest recruiting day that you have on the calendar? Probably this in the homecoming normally is, you know, uh, senior day, high school senior day. Uh, so we have a lot of those guys come by, and uh, it'll be great. So we, we need to have a nice crowd and, and play a good football game. Help me out, Coach. There were a lot of student athletes that were looking forward to an opportunity to try to play in college. If you're a high school senior and you want to play at Alabama A&M University, what do they need to do? You got to apply to school, get accepted. <laughs> Uh, and then uh, if, you, if you're a walk-on, you know, of course, like I said, you got to apply to school, you got to be accepted, and uh, then you got to try out and then make the football team. So, um, Give them a name of someone they can contact. I'm tired of sending emails. Uh, <laughs> they got to go to admissions. You got to go to admissions and get admitted to school. And then once you get that, then you can contact us. And that means they pass the NCAA clearinghouse. They have their grades in order. Right. They are eligible. Well, no, admissions means you get accepted to school. And then when they get accepted to school and they try to try for us, then we'll take care of all that. We'll send them to our academic people. They'll check the NC Clearhouse, uh, make sure they're eligible, all those things. All right. Because you can still practice and, but not play because of eligibility. So you can still actually be on the football team. Uh, but we got to double check that and make sure you're eligible so we don't play any ineligible players. Of course. Now let's go back to the 82nd Magic City Classic. A game that started in 1940 in Birmingham, had a few years off for World War II, but then it's been continuous, Coach. It's a rough one. Please pick us up after that game, Coach. Give me something to look forward to because that's a bitter pill to swallow. Well, it is, but, you know, <clears throat> Ted, I say it all the time. You got to take them one at a time, and you can't live off last week. You can't live off the first quarter, second quarter, first half, or, or a game, or a play that you make. You have to keep playing. And so if we don't want the football game, we got to come back this week. We got to watch the tape today, get better, learn from it, and get ready to play FAMU. Win, lose, or draw, you have to do the same thing every week. Uh, so we just got to be consistent. You got to be ready to play. If you win the game, if you lose the game, if you tie the game, you got to come back the next week, work hard, and get ready to play another game because you got to do it again this week. A little football one-on-one. <clears throat> The end of the first half, Alabama State scored a touchdown on a Hail Mary pass. Explain what that play is and what's supposed to happen. Yeah. Hail Mary, they're they going to try to buy some time, throw it up, and try to catch the ball in the end zone. Uh, you know, we, we got to do a couple of things. Uh, we got to reroute the receivers. We go ahead, four guys back, then we had four guys up. So we got to reroute those guys and slow them down. Uh, and then the back guys got to knock the ball down. And there's also no pass interference on a, on a Hail Mary. So, I mean, you could grab the guy and don't let him jump. Uh, and we knocked the ball down and we didn't do that. And uh, we didn't reroute the guy. We didn't knock him down. We didn't grab him. He jumped up, caught the ball for a touchdown. Uh, he was playing the football game because we had just scored. 
they take the lead, and now we give them a touchdown in two plays. And uh, it was discouraging, but you know, at the end of the day, it was a three-point game at halftime. They, they really, if you look at it, they really hadn't scored on our defense. We gave them a punt return, and then they got a Hail Mary. So we were, we were still feeling good today. Hey, we fine, just don't let them score any more points. We'll score again, and we'll win the football game. Of course, we <clears throat> come out on the short side of that. But in the second half, as we'll get a chance to look at those highlights, what do you think was the turning point in the second half? Would have been the – was the block field goal in the first half or second half? I can't remember. It was the second half. Okay, so they got the ball coming out, a uh, three-point game, and uh, after the Hail Mary. Okay, so defense comes down and stop them. And they punt. We get the ball. We got good field position. First play, we overthrow the guy wide open, incomplete. Second play, we run the ball, gets five yards. Third down. We call a play for Terrell. Uh, Xavier rolls out to the left and takes a sack. Now that pushes her back to a, a deeper field goal and uh, field goal get blocked. But the play about the thing about that field goal is that it should have never happened because the clock was running down and I saw the clock running down. So I ran up to the official and called timeout. And he didn't give me the timeout. What did you do? Flavor. He didn't acknowledge my timeout. They snapped the ball. They blocked it. Scoop scored for a touchdown. What am I supposed to do? Ain't nothing I can do. There was one concern mentioned by one of the But that was the biggest play in the game because now uh, they got a 10-point lead. They got a great defense. They start, they start milking the clock, okay? They run the clock down now because they, they say, okay, we're going we're gonna to slow the game down, limit their possessions with our great defense. They're going to have to score the ball now, you know, put more pressure on us and limit our scoring opportunities. So, yeah, it was a huge play. Uh, both of those plays before the half in there, get them 14 points that they shouldn't have had. And uh, that was the difference in the ball game. <clears throat> of course, Coach, I'm thinking now that when you put that kind of adversity in front of you, there was a comment made by one of the Southwestern Athletic Conference officials about the, 20, about the, the play clock in the south end zone where all the tents were. So I know pregame, I, I noticed it was a little difficult to see. Then right off the bat, we get two delay of game penalties because you can't see the clock. Yeah, and then uh, the head ref, Preston, told Xavier, uh, look up on the scoreboard. It's a, it's a little one up on the scoreboard. You ain't supposed to do that. You're supposed to make them move those tents. The quarterbacks need to be able to see the play clock on the field. You don't let that tent overrule the football game, Okay. Then I had an official come up to me and say, hey, coach, that's my fault on the 25-second clock. We told Alabama, Alabama State about that, that problem, but we didn't tell y'all. So there it is. That's how they treat us. But we'll get a chance to get back at it next year, but really get a chance to get back on November 4th, Ford A&M comes to town. They're the best team in the conference, Coach Maynard said but we get a chance to show what Bulldog football is all about, and we'll talk more about that when we come back for the Alabama a and Football Review with the head coach, Connell May. Darrell brings new energy to the power plant. Julian's accounting is by the numbers. There's student interns from the College of Business and Public Affairs at Alabama A&M University, where marketing class connects with the community and companies come to recruit. So while Kyle strengthens his managerial skills, he's earning a business degree and experience at Alabama A&M University. Start here, go anywhere. Hello, I'm Pastor Troy. The game of football is a lot like the game of life. You have to tackle your problems and block your fears. I just want you to know there is victory in Jesus. I want to invite you to worship with us at one of our anointed services at our Huntsville campus or our Madison campus. At the Fellowship of Faith, Jesus is exalted and the word is explained. We love Alabama A&M. Go Bulldogs! <laughs> Parker is 29 and learning to communicate again. The students teaching him earn a degree with 100% job placement, but the real reward is changing a life. 
At Alabama A&M, it's a university where agencies actually go to recruit compassionate students who help themselves by helping others. Service is sovereignty at Alabama A&M University. Start here. Go anywhere. Union Chapel Missionary Baptist Church, a church with a big heart of love. Located at 315 Winchester Road in Huntsville, Alabama. Under the leadership of Dr. O. Wendell Davis. The worship services begin at 7.45 a.m. and 10.45 a.m. every Sunday. Now, we pray that you are blessed by our worship experience. Hello, I'm Pastor Troy. The game of football is a lot like the game of life. You have to tackle your problems and block your fears. I just want you to know there is victory in Jesus. I want to invite you to worship with us at one of our anointed services at our Huntsville campus or our Madison campus. At the Fellowship of Faith, Jesus is exalted and the word is explained. We love Alabama A&M. Go Bulldogs! <laughs> Companies hunger for our food scientists. Here, a new generation manages our cities of tomorrow. The discovery of hardier plants, healthier animals, is growing at our research station. Alabama A&M University, where new designs and ideas are put to the test. Be a researcher in our labs, or a forestry fire dog in our fields. Alabama A&M University. Start here. Go anywhere. Back to the Alabama a and Football Review with head coach Kyle Maynard. I'm your host, Ted Dixie. A couple of announcements for you. The game against Florida a and on November 4th is high school and community college day. So as coach just explained to you, if you want to continue your sports career at Alabama a and go ahead and get accepted. That makes it a lot easier. If you're at a junior college, you know, all your credits are going to transfer to the university. Please. Fill out your application. Come on campus. Take a tour if you've never been here. We'll be happy to host you. And also, it is senior day for our senior student athletes. Coaches like I told Terrell Gardner and John Williams, hey, thank you so much for your service. You know, folks, student athletes not only have to go to class, they have to go to practice. Heaven forbid they get injured, but heaven forbid they get hurt and have to have surgery and then have to go through rehab. So I've always been supportive of student athletes, coach. They do so much for us just to be able to go cheer and be able to put our chest out and talk about what our school does. But we thank y'all for taking care of those kids too. Yeah, that's our job. <clears throat> that's our job. It's all about the kids. Um, if it weren't for the student athletes, we wouldn't have a job. You know, the school wouldn't be here. So it's always all about those guys uh, We and getting that degree, but uh, and then try to have, play, have a successful football season. Uh, get them a ring on their on thing and they can wear the rest of their life and uh, get that degree. I know that crowd. They saw the Magic City Classic 69,000. Terrell Gardner got a chance to score a touchdown in his hometown. That's something, folks, that when you see someone's face after that, and but Gardner wasn't happy, though, because of the loss. He didn't want to talk about a touchdown, Coach. I think that speaks volumes to what kind of team you had. Yeah, you know, and his touchdown was huge. It was right before the half. Turned the momentum, gave us the uh, the momentum and – Great. And the lead, 
and the great you right, a great oh, catch man. and run made the guy miss and, and then I ran the next guy. Um it, it was just great. And then of course it didn't last very long because they took the lead back. But uh Terrell's been a great player for us and uh we love having Terrell and if I had a hundred of Terrells mm. we would win a lot of championships. Mm, no doubt. So folks, November fourth, we'll check the kickoff time, but you can go to AAMUsports.com anytime about any of the Bulldog athletic teams. We hope that you will support them as well, whether it be women's soccer, who's on a tear right now, folks. Be looking out for that news. And, of course, the Bulldogs will host the Rattlers Saturday afternoon. And you also can hear that game on 90.9 FM, WJAB. Again, my hero of the week, Kerry Macklin and Mike Morris. Thank you all so much for helping us out this weekend. We appreciate it. Coach, you get the last word. Go Bulldogs. See you all uh, Saturday. Come out and support. Uh, we need all the support we can get against FAMU. It's senior, it's senior day. Come out and support these guys. They gave all their blood, sweat, and tears to this program for the last four or five, and some of them six, six. years. <laughs> so come out and support these guys. It means a lot to them. Uh, show them how much you really love them. Amen to that. Service is sovereignty. Thank you for watching the Alabama a and Football Review with head coach, Connell Maynard. Bulldog fans, thank you for joining us today for the Alabama a and University Football Review. Bulldog faithful, we encourage your support and participation. Until next time, go Bulldogs! Union Chapel Missionary Baptist Church, a church with a big heart of love. Located at 315 Winchester Road in Huntsville, Alabama. Under the leadership of Dr. O. Wendell Davis. The worship services begin at 7.45 a.m. and 10.45 a.m. every Sunday. Now, we pray that you are blessed by our worship experience. Hello, I'm Pastor Troy. The game of football is a lot like the game of life. You have to tackle your problems and block your fears. I just want you to know there is victory in Jesus. I want to invite you to worship with us at one of our anointed services at our Huntsville campus or our Madison campus. At the Fellowship of Faith, Jesus is exalted and the word is explained. We love Alabama A&M. Go Bulldogs! <laughs> Don't get hit hard by low trade offers. Get up to $5,000 over Kelly Blue Book Fair Market Value for any trade at University Kia. Check out our large selection of new Kias. University Kia proudly supports Alabama A&M University football. Go Bulldogs!